latest podcast. Panel latest podcast. Panel latest podcast. Panel latest podcast. We're going to be talking about everything that we liked about the year. We've all got our best of list and should be fun. It's a nice little recap to end your holiday. We should have done a worst of and just talk shit about people. We do that enough. We talk (laughs) a lot of shit. That is true. (laughs) Comics is the baseline for this podcast. So what's everyone's favorite ongoing that came out this year? Well, being the list has my initial first. I'll go first. (laughs) As many might know, Stephanie Phillips is one of my favorite people. We have a special bond. When I see her conventions, I look at her funny and she doesn't react in any kind of uncomfortable way. So I feel like we're friends. But (laughs) her book Grimm is absolutely fantastic. And I'm only missing, I want to say four or five covers. And if you do the math on that, especially for like some of the high end ones, thousands. I have dunked into Grimm. It is a great series. She does little nods to classic rock. The art is fantastic, which I can't remember the artist's name. But overall, pulled me back in even more so into like indie books. So are you specking on Grimm or do you just love it so much you want to complete it? Oh, I'm doing both. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) I have plenty of duplicates of first appearances outside of the number one and i have every print what i sent out at new york comic-con i sent duplicates because i want one for myself and i'll keep the higher grade but yeah i think it is the breakout series of 2022 since my initials next zeb wells and john amita jr's amazing spider-man is my pick of ongoing for the year it feels like a return to form i mean don't get me wrong dan slot is an amazing spider-man writer i just really like the way that zeb and ramita jr work together it feels like coming home essentially the first storyline was absolutely great the second storyline has been really really good i'm interested to see where dark web goes and it's being pumped out every two weeks we're getting a new spider-man issue so that's been nice to keep up on that so yeah my pick for the year is amazing spider-man here's turn <laughs> The motherfucker knows. It's my turn. (laughs) And being that my initial is next, I'd like to talk about Vanish, my favorite comic book of the year. I think that was a fun little interview we did with Ryan Segman. And I mean, just Donny Cates, Ryan Segman being obviously the duo that I fell in love with and that brought me back into comic. This book has a little special place in my heart at this point. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I don't think it took 2022 by any chance, but I do see its potential for 2023. I think the artwork is something to check out segment differentiates himself a little bit from what he's done previously and just expands a little bit more on his art and then donna cates just does what he does best and i think it's cool to see them just having their own book their own freedom on what they're doing yeah check that one out so mine's kind of cheating but it's spider-man miles morales cody ziggler kind of made the perfect first issue for miles like thus far i don't know if that was hard for him to do but blew it out of the park Uh, it's also cheating because we just talked to him and had a great conversation with him he put miles in the perfect place right now to go forward and have like a great year there's no reason why miles morales shouldn't be like a household name which he probably is already he should be but i think this book will somewhat float in how he should be brought into the mcu and will just you know a nice ascension of the character that is not the last time Cody's name will be brought up, I'm sure. <laughs> no, it's not. Next, we have a comic book mini series, not an ongoing, but a mini series. So uh, let's start with Dimitri. What was your favorite of 2022? DC Max by the beloved Kenny Porter. Yeah, I wish I was in that episode and I wasn't, and it sucks, but what are you going to do? But yeah, I can't wait for issue six. It's been fantastic thus far, and can't wait. So the mini series I followed this year was Spider Punk, and that was actually what introduced me to Cody Ziegler. And then I found out that he actually was on She-Hulk, which doesn't change my opinion at all about him. I love the show. I love love the book. You can't go back to any of my previous episodes, find out anything. The only episode Pierre liked is the one that Cody wrote, which is hysterical. Like literally the one you were like, this is the only good one. And that's how I knew Cody was great. That was the moment (laughs) that I was like, Cody and me were meant to be. I'm glad that he wrote Spider-Punk because it was pretty sick. I have not read it yet, but I have it complete in my two-read pile. I liked it. I thought it was a very different take on just a a spider-man character so with the art and just the writing style it really embodied what i would figure spider punk would be like so that was cool my mini series of the year has to be charles sewell and ryan brown's eight billion genies eight part mini series will be finishing up early next year amazon picked it up and optioned it before this first issue dropped (laughs) and there's a very good reason we're six issues in as of date of recording this and it is 
balls to the wall, funny, fun, scary, hilarious. All 8 billion people on earth get a genie and get a wish. And it goes exactly how you think it would. And they go issue by issue. First one is eight hours. Second one is eight days. Third one is eight weeks. Fourth one is eight months, so on and so forth. So the next issue is eight decades. And I'm assuming after that will be eight centuries. Yeah, absolutely fantastic series if you haven't picked it up. And the first issue is really hot right now, running between 70 and 80 bucks. I have a few third or fourth prints, I think, which just shows how popular it is. There's a great scene in the first issue where when everyone gets their genies and this teenage girl who's just pissed off says to her parents i wish you'd burn in hell and then they just burst into flames oh. so oh shit also in my to read pile so my mini series was beyond the white knight obviously batman beyond pushed ahead of everything else i apologize to everyone else because it was a lot of good mini series but you know sean murphy we had a great interaction with him actually talking about the book in new york and me and pierre actually sent out the one per shop variant to be signed by him with remarks so those are going to be probably back next year like the end of next year, but will be fantastic. Yeah, again, Batman Beyond is a different take and everything White Knight has been great. So just the fact that that world got a Beyond version is super exciting. And uh, Sean Murphy, talk to you soon. All right. So uh, what was the favorite comic movie of 2022? Hey, well, easy answer. Not much to say about it. Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever. I put Namor Forever, <laughs> which is a reference to Wakanda Forever. Mm. But I just feel like it's like his movie now, you know what I mean? Is that also your favorite? Favorite movie, Dimitri? Super Pets. <laughs> <laughs> Super Pets. The great Dwayne The Rock Johnson and mm. Kevin Hart. It was about the pets of the DC universe, and I just thought it was it was a good movie. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, also known as The Kiss of Death for anything franchise. The Black uh, Adam, yes. The Black Adam. Our next category is comic show or special. That's right. These shows were nominated for being the best shows of the year, based off of solely our opinion. I'll go first with this one, because I think I'm the only one who watched this and gave a shit about it. Amazon's Paper Girls. I absolutely loved it it was very faithful to the comics as much as they could have been to this point in where they were in the comics to where they were in the show the casting directors deserve all the praise because the four actresses that they got to play the four main characters nailed it they basically stepped right off the page it was fantastic it's fun unfortunately we're not getting a second season but i absolutely adore it and i, I will go back to rewatch it because i loved it i will correct you just so quickly that i did watch it in its entirety you did now i have never read it oh, so it didn't, it didn't no. hold the same value to me i felt like budget possibly hurt it it was as if i just took you to my favorite restaurant and you said it was shit <laughs> <laughs> The chef just wasn't to my liking, that's all. I would also like to comment on Paper Girls. I heard of it. <laughs> I did not watch it. I didn't realize it was even about a comic book. I thought it was about two girls, you know, as they say, making that paper. Well, my favorite show, and I believe is the best comic book show of the year, is Moon Knight. I believe that it really encompasses what we're looking for in a comic book show. Not enough and Moon Knight? <laughs> Jeremiah, this is my turn to talk. As I was saying, it really brings out what we're looking for in comic books, which is action, comedy, romance. Just brought me closer to the character that's been someone close to my heart for many, many years. So take all of that with a grain of salt. <laughs> next it is she hulk i will be honest i really think miss marvel was a closer second than you might think boo she hulk boo she hulk fear is leaving <laughs> due to my comments <laughs> Oh, um, I would like to continue without him, I guess. Yeah, She-Hulk, I love that it was just very different. I think overall, all of the episodes were good, even if Cody didn't write them, although Cody's were the best. Just the overall vibe of She-Hulk was something refreshing that I really enjoyed. Welcome back, Pierre. I'm going to go now. I'm going to say Peacemaker. <laughs> James Gunn, for a character not very well known, he knocked it out of the park. Same way he did with In the Galaxy. I think that who the fuck knew that John Cena could act? Act that well, yeah. Act yeah. that well, that's fair. Who is everyone's favorite comic book writer this year? One of the things about comics that makes it a lot fun is that writers can write multiple books at once, and so they can spread their wings a lot further than artists can. So who did everyone like as a writer? I personally like Donny Cates, and I know I've mentioned him already. I think that, again, pulled me into comics 
this year, I think, bigger than ever. And reading his run on Thor. And before that, I guess Kyle had me read Venom. And that's really what was like, oh, shit. Like, I really fucking like this. Then I read Hulk, Thor, and now I'm reading his independent stuff. So I think I even read, what was that one book about his dad? That was Oof. Oh, fucking good book. God Country? God yes. Country, yes. I was going to say God Holy Country. Holy shit. But... Yeah. Have you read Crossover? Not yet. I have them. Kyle like gave me all like, I was like, I don't have time for this ticket. Yeah, so I have them. I haven't read it at all yet. Pierre is uh, going to be I real confused when he gets... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a book you Google things as you read. (laughs) My guy, Kieran Gillen. And honestly, I've always been like a background fan, I guess is the way you say it. Like he's not like someone I would ever name, but I couldn't not name him this year because the way Hickman kind of drifted away from X-Men over the past two years, Gillen kind of came in and has done so many things with them. And the whole Eternals versus Avengers versus X-Men, all of that. AXC, all of that. The whole Judgment Day. I mean, you got to give him credit. He put in so much work and none of it was shit. It was all solid, more than solid. And how much he accomplished as far as like pushing the X-Men forward, even past Krakoa. Because Krakoa has been going on for a while now. We know it's coming to an end. It needs to. He's doing a great job, but yeah, it's definitely reaching its climax. He's got the right stuff going on that's going to gear it up to have a good finale. He's got to get credit for this year. Like, he just has to as like being a top writer. I'll go next. Cody Ziggler because we had a great conversation. I felt very connected to him. So Cody Ziggler, yeah, that's it. And for me, it would be Chip Zdarsky. Chip Zdarsky has done an incredible job with Daredevil, but not only that, they gave him the reins to Batman and he hasn't fucked it up yet. The fact that you're writing for the big two at the same time is kind of a huge deal because it hasn't happened in quite a while. At least six years to my knowledge. I think Jeff Lemire was the last person to do it. But yeah, Chip has been knocking out of the ballpark. Daredevil has been super interesting batman has been great as well and it it isn't falling into the old tropes of batman it's starting to like rehash some older storylines and flush them out better but this is a whole new take on daredevil electra being a daredevil the fist in the hand story has been absolutely fantastic so not to mention his public domain stuff over on substack has been really fun so yeah chip who knew that drawing penises could get you this far he actually pops into stegman's klc press lives once in a while and he's a funny dude he's he's hilarious I think one of my favorite videos of him ever was him and Matt Fraction went to the cartoonist library in Ohio State. He took a picture with the Garfield statue that stands outside of it, but Matt Fraction didn't take a picture. He just recorded a video for like five minutes. Chip was like posing with the Garfield and like would talk to Kelly Sue and then pose again. And then finally he realized, oh, you're taking a fucking video. It's one of my favorite videos ever. That's good. All right. So next, obviously, we said writer. Let's do artist. Right back onto the Daredevil bandwagon. Mark. Marco Chittichotto? I don't know how you pronounce that, but yeah, his artwork with the Daredevil series has been absolutely fantastic. He's been doing a lot of really cool covers. The way he does Electra's hair is fantastic. The way he designed her costume, just absolutely loving the work that he's doing. And he's come a very long way from where he was, but it still looks like his style. Not to mention he did that Daredevil 4 variant with Miracle Man, so oh, my heart. But yeah, he's been absolutely killing it this year. I'll go next. Sonia Obak. She's the colorist for or vanish and otherwise gave that comic a how do I put this a very Capullo Glapian esque vibe to the whole book. So she's a gem. All right, Dimitri, doing great. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Peach Momoko is my favorite of the year. Down a really, really deep rabbit hole of buying Peach Momoko comic books, which I believe Jeremiah actually warned me about about buying variants. And yeah, if anyone's looking for Peach Momoko comic books, they're all up for sale right now (laughs) i need to pay my bills (laughs) yeah seriously i think her art style everything kind of combining even just the stories that she's writing with her art it's hitting all the right spots she did a four page miracle man story and it blew my damn mind we saw her in new york and it was her first time ever in new york and holy shit those lines i'm sure people have heard about it but there was controversy because those lines were the most insane we've ever seen and it was deserved 10 free signatures and then like super cheap remarks and why new york put her in the middle of an aisle i'll never understand we got there dumb early because of press passes and no chance no chance at all for any of that but we got prince so that was cool and all the surrounding artists were uh, not happy about being next to her kind of fun to watch my response 
is Dan Mora. And this is very similar to my last one in the sense that you got to give credit to someone who's putting in that much work, doing that many issues, and all of it's phenomenal. I mean, he did so much between Batman and Superman, miniseries, action comics, the variant covers. I know I bought a handful of them. He's consistently good. And that's the modern style that I always like that I fall into. And I think he's going to be a name we hear for a very, very, very long time. He's just going to be one of those names that will always be at a convention. You always kind of find him. He's always going to have a line. It's awesome to see the elevation of artists over years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a cool thing. The next category is anime. That's right. Very big on anime here at Panel Aids Podcast, Dimitri being the biggest on it. So I think Dimitri should go first. Oh, it was Chainsaw Man, episode one. We saw it in New York. Pretty and cool. we're being honest, Pierre, mine's Chainsaw Man. There was a lot of anime I watched and liked this year, but nothing beats Chainsaw Man. And it's got literally one more episode coming out, and we're going to do a whole episode on it. We've been teasing, talking all about the whole season, but can you deny that it is not the greatest anime from this year? You're going to fight me. You're really going to fight me? No, even if you look on Crunchyroll, it's the number one one anime yeah, yeah. on Crunchyroll just most popular right now. It's beating everything. My Hero Academia which was running fucking charts forever. Which has been it good. Just, it came out and just blew everything out of the water. And so. it will be what Jeremiah watches when we finally get him to watch yeah, them. I'll watch an anime eventually. Sure, Chainsaw Man sounds interesting. I'll send uh, you a password. I've been playing too much Pokemon. And that we will accept as your answer. <laughs> you want to see how many shinies you got? You want to throw that in here? Technically I have five. I have a Delibird, three Heracrosses, and I just got a zangoose right before we started recording can't you transfer a pokemon from pokemon go to that you can transfer a pokemon go to home you just can't transfer them to a scarlet or violet yet that's probably coming in the spring because i was gonna say i have a lot of shinies through pokemon go are we not friends on pokemon go we should be because i have a perfect living dex on pokemon go. Not right now so one of my favorite things is collecting so what was everyone's big collection pickup of the year anything that you thought that was a great addition to your collection to say the same name over and over not be original obviously we know ryan stegman's my favorite we know that i'm a member of klc press the Substack. but something cool he does which i mentioned before is he does live streams and in those live streams he does sketches and as paid members you have a chance to win a sketch and i did win a moon knight sketch now have i read any moon knight comics before <laughs> No, but is Ryan Stegman's name on it? Is my favorite piece that I own now? Absolutely. So there's that. It is that. beautiful as well. It's funny. My wife and I were at a restaurant and I was <laughs> on my phone and she was saying, you really got to be on your phone right now? Like when we're eating dinner, like I'm talking. And I said, can you at least let me put some chain comments in this sub stack? Because that's how you win the sketch. Like, let me just comment. Let me just put my entry in. And it was that one that I actually won. So I almost didn't do it because I was getting shit for being on my phone. And, you should have um, just commented. My wife makes me want to turn this off. It's funny too because Dimitri and I had just seen Stegman in Philly and we went to their exclusive panel and we got in there because of KLC Press and it was super cool and the fact that we just did that when Stegman heard panel he's oh that's cool I, I just saw them that's right that's all he said but it was still a cool moment and was a seed that was planted you know eventually conned him to be on the podcast it bloomed into an interview flower Yes. I have to piggyback yeah. off that because my favorite collectible was the print from that, I guess, gathering. I think it's seven. Yeah, it's, I think it was the cover that was Dylan Brock's first appearance, mm -hmm. which is cool. Yeah, that and the ticket to the event is on my wall. So that's yeah, cool. it was a cool ticket. It was a cool event. That was one of my favorite panels. I guess I'll go next because Pierre looks pretty distracted. It's kind of hard to beat my birthday card from Paulo this year. Oh, shit. The meaning behind this was just absolutely insane. And I still can't believe that something like this happened. In terms of comedy, that I picked up this year. It's an oldie. My Incredible Science Fiction 33 double cover. It is the last comic that EC ever published. It was number one on my grails list for a very long time and I can't believe I actually got it. But the birthday card definitely trumps it. I got it tattooed on my body. So I was going to say the tattoo. Yeah. That's the tattoo right there. Pierre, since you didn't pay attention to any of that, what was it you were digging through? Is that relevant to your response for favorite collectible collection you picked uh, up this year? There's a big pile, a lot, so much. I decided to buy a lot of comic books and it between comic books and slabs and action figures and just everything. I have a lot of debt and <laughs> what you'll find in the link for this is a GoFundMe page. If anyone wants to you know, help my debt out, support me, you know, that's all I got. So our final category is honorable mentions, just general nerdy things, things you want to shout out that might not have been the best, but are overlooked or you just want to give a little more light. I'll start. I think Andor was fantastic. Amazing. 
amazing. Andor was amazing. It had enough Star Wars feel, but if you changed some helmets on things, you wouldn't have known it was Star Wars. But it was just very well done. Slow start, but definitely overlooked. With that, obviously, Rings of Power is another one I'll throw in there. Oh. Also, just generally overlooked. And then I want to say Anime Con was a different experience from the normal conventions we go to, but it was still a cool experience. Things were a little faster paced. There was more things to buy, more things to eat. It was a different vibe, but still a convention. And then lastly, I got to talk about these retro figures on card. Like, that's making me buy so many more action figures. <laughs> and like, I'm really trying not to, but the on card ones, that's cool that they're doing that. The Marvel Legends, you can't see in them. Not, not cool, cool anymore. I don't like it. I understand like the earth, it's important stuff, but not a fan of that. But the retro ones, fantastic. I just want to mention real quick, rest in peace to a lot of amazing comic creators who passed away this year. There goes the vibe. Um, yeah, there goes the vibe. <laughs> it's been a heavy year for comics creators, specifically oh, yeah. George Perez. It's unfortunate that he has passed, but he's no longer in pain and that's the important part but next time you see your favorite comic book creator throw him some money tell him what you appreciate them because you don't know if you'll get another opportunity that's all i wanted to say and to bring the vibe back up that whole throwing money you know again that gofundme page marvel snap it came out this year and i said i wouldn't play it and i said kyle would like it and i said i would never ever play it i mm -hmm. played it i played the fuck out of it <laughs> and, <laughs> i got so many collectibles and yeah it's actually a solid game but i won't play midnight son you won't catch me dead playing that all right so don't even think it i'm excited for that game I mean, that dc panels where everyone cried that was that panel that was you know the very somber you know just piggybacking off of everything that jeremiah said really sucked all right before we wrap our 2022 <laughs> shambles of a award show episode Peter David's been having some health issues. If you have any extras that you can throw towards a real GoFundMe that can go to someplace good, definitely do that. To bring up Zeb Wells again, he gave an enormous, enormous donation to shout him out. Yes. I forget how many grand it was. I it, think it was five. Is it five? Okay. Yeah. So Peter David, we met him years and years ago before we were doing any of this. But A really very cool long-standing dude. creator. Yeah, it sucks to see him dealing with this shit, but I love seeing updates from his wife. Like all of it is somewhat optimistic and, you know, yeah, hopeful to see him sooner than later at a convention and quick recovery. Thank you guys for joining us for this year. We had a lot of great episodes. We had a lot of great interviews yes. and we do this to entertain and have fun with ourselves. And thank you guys for coming along with the journey. And here's to many more episodes in 2023. Yes. A weird way of putting it, having fun with ourselves. Pierre, I knew you were going to rip that up part <laughs> just uh, fun with ourselves you know okay. i do it to have fun with you guys oh you know? a bunch of guys having fun together i think that's really what the show is all about Berta. circle of fun having fun <laughs> together in a circle and with that panelized podcast panelized podcast panelized podcast panelized podcast Jeremiah, you know the clip of John Romita Jr.? Yeah, when he was talking about the Contest of Champions. Mm -hmm. So funny story. The actual clip, like the real clip, was like triple the length because he was trying to figure out the name Contest of Champions and me and Dimitri didn't know. <laughs> so he's like, you know, the cover with the... And then I'm like, I have no idea. Like I couldn't <laughs> even make a guess. So what I did was after we walked away, I was like, oh, the noise level's the same. I literally said into the microphone, Contest of Champions. And then I turned that video into audio and I overlaid it and I edited it when he was like, well, yeah, and just kept talking about it. I made it seem like he just what he say it. like I knew what he was talking about and just he kept talking about it. And the whole like trying to figure it out, I completely removed. Seamlessly flawless. And it's like honestly like one of the best interviews we did at a convention ever and it's completely a lie. <laughs> We're so professional. Dimitri's clapping. He's really excited. <laughs> yeah. Fly. There's a fucking Ooh. fly. Okay. <laughs> James Gunn put his tongue in my mouth and I liked it. Like, that's what I want to see for the next, like, if the TikTok algorithm phase. does better, maybe you'll go viral for saying that. <laughs> My favorite, if you haven't guessed by now, well, obviously you wouldn't have guessed because we talked about giving me that comic book before we started recording. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, wave it around for everyone. <laughs> we were walking the dogs. Were we walking the dog? No. <laughs> Does it matter? I mean, what? <laughs> no, no, it's a whole walking thing something. Oh, no, okay. So you're walking, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bloopers in this are going to be <laughs> this much. The episode's going to be this. <laughs>
That, what was that that you're measuring again? Not mine. Mine was much smaller. <laughs> What do you want? It really sucked. <laughs> what do you want? No, no, no. I mean, it sucked, as in, like, you know. It was unfortunate. It sucked. <laughs> 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 it was fun, yes. 